we want his life to mean as much um, to as many people as possible and to let all of the positive ripples of his life be there. I was all excited to have, you know, this process where we labored at home and then at the last section, second when it was push time, we would go to the hospital and, you know, have the uneducated birth in the hospital setting with the support of my husband, my doula, and then my daughter was going to get to come. I had just, you know, great test results on everything, always measuring right on track. Baby looked great. I had what my obstetrician called um an uneventful and boring pregnancy. And then coronavirus. Once I found out the doula wasn't going to be able to be there, I started to get really um, anxious. In some cities, people weren't even allowed to have their birth partner in the delivery room with them. And then I started to get really anxious and really afraid. We're seeing in New York City some aggressive and very precautionary action preventing any support person from being in the delivery room with that mother. Partners will not be allowed there when babies are born. I, mean, I myself am 38 weeks pregnant. We may not be allowed to even a visitor. People are making all kinds of very challenging decisions. Moms were talking about their babies actually being taken from them after they ran a fever. You know, I'm sitting there thinking, what if I spike a fever because I, you know, that's sometimes a normal part of giving birth and then I get my baby taken from me. And I mean, the irony now looking back is, you know, I don't have my baby now, but the fear of all that compounded so much. When I was planning to attempt to let my body do this in a natural way anyway, why wouldn't I just take that burden off the healthcare system and have it at home? So at 38 weeks, I went to my last obstetric appointment. No indication of what we were walking into. You know, his head was crowning. We didn't know it was he, he you know, at the time. And yeah. She gets on the phone. The doula gets on the phone with the midwife. Like, are you close? Like, I'm about to catch a baby. And the midwife gets there literally just as I am getting the urge to push. And his head was born really quickly. I expected the head to be born and then for the body to kind of slither out. I had read about shoulder dystocia and how it's kind of the one that is like uh, kind of a scary obstetric situation. The obstetric nightmare that we had with no warning. It happens, you have to get the baby all the way out. My brain went into immediately, like, not flight, but fight mode, and I, I immediately knew that it was shoulder dystocia, and I got worried, and from there, it was like an Olympic effort. And just as the EMTs were walking in, um, I lifted my leg in a certain way. He did the counter pressure in a certain way. The doula shoved her shoulder into my pelvis and the midwife was doing the wood screws maneuver. And just as the EMTs walked in, they screamed like, baby's out. And I remember turning around in shock, like looking for him thinking, okay, just, you know, just breathe and I looked and I saw that his um I didn't know it was a boy at the time it was just his back and they were um trying to get a heart rate and I don't think they were having any um any success finding that and I flipped him over and I remember saying babe it's a boy which is what we really wanted I mean, I mean everyone we always said a healthy baby but you know we wanted a boy we were trying for a boy you know, I was so happy to see it was a boy, but then I saw um, his umbilical cord and it was, it was white. It, it seemed like an eternity and I guess it was. Um, and then they had like a pulse that seemed go from like this ghost to like pink and like he, he, he came back um, to fight to, to see if, you know, he could live. And I, it was a, a miracle at that point in time because it was nearly, it was an hour 
of him having no heart rate or no no breathing. Brain didn't get oxygen during, during that time, so he was, you know, critically ill. Was first called to the doctor, severe brain trauma. Um, that the 45 minutes that he didn't have a heart rate was, she said, the longest that she's ever seen a baby come back from personally. And, you know, we got to hold him, we got to kiss him, we got to feel like warmth in his body, which we wouldn't have been able to do. And once they figured out that McCoy wasn't going to come home, they made an exception from the hospital to let us both be by his side because of the pandemic. They, um, they're only letting one parent at a time in the NICU. He would let me go in there and, you know, sing to him and tell him all the things he's done while he was in my belly and um, kind of get to know him. It made it a little bit harder, um, but we're really glad that we got to meet him and get to know him. And they made a one-time exception for our daughter to meet him. And she got to meet him. She got to, you know, sing to him and play this little piggy on his fingers. And at the point that she was leaving, had to tell her, you know, this is the last time you're seeing your, your brother. Um, he's going to go to heaven. So, you know, he can't come home with us. And she cried. And then, um, you know, she had a hard time that night when we came home to kind of process that with her. She asked, well, can we have another baby? And can it be a girl this time? And can you have her on Thursday? <laughs> and so she just, you know, little Optimus is really helping us kind of, uh, kind of get through this. He got to end up um, giving his heart valves to other kids so that he can um, kind of live on through them. Um, the milk that was meant for him is going to, you know, an adopted mom who has a baby in the NICU and, you know, just we're, we're trying to, um, like most parents, I think when they deal with the loss, they want to, they want to make sure that they're, they're, you know, they were here, they mattered. We want to, his life to mean as much um, to as many people as possible and to let all of the positive ripples of his life be there. It's a real perspective on what's important and what's, you know, artificial. Because nothing will ever be as painful as what we went through and are going through, everything is also sweeter. Like every time I hear our daughter laugh, it's that much better and every time I see her run it's that much you know it's that much more of a joy to see like because we've hit the lowest of lows you know everything that's good is also just much better it's like I don't know putting salt on watermelon it somehow makes it sweeter thank you to all those moms that told me that I'll live through it and that to take it one day at a time. Each one of you that has reached out and told me of your pain, I'm so sorry that we share it, but I appreciate you standing beside me because it's it's crappy, but I, I don't feel as bad knowing that it gets better someday.